Hey, welcome back everybody. Uh, this is the next in my uh, video vlog on putting together the uh, Boat Action 2nd Edition Band of Brothers set. Uh, the last time we were here, we finished up the uh, townhouse. Uh, we had already done the uh, German Grenadiers and we had already done the half track. So today I'm working on the American Airborne, which are included in the set. Uh, if I remember correctly, I think you get 24 of these of the American Airborne. So as you can see, like I did last time, I've already started uh, separating the models into the different components. Uh, now this set actually is kind of odd. It's one of the new ones, but it uses kind of a, a mix between the old and the new sprue. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh, if you remember when I was doing the uh, Grenadiers, I'll see if I have an example here because I do have some out. Uh, there was a certain, there were certain arms, for example, that uh, I think this is one because his hand is not glued on there. So this arm said here, if I can get this to focus. Okay, let me see if I can get this to focus. There we go. This guy's arm here was one piece. These were connected and you just glued. And I can tell that by the way the hands are molded onto the weapon. So, and that was kind of in the new set. They were going with those uh, one pieces. Now, in some of the older sets, and I'll give you, I'll see if I can find you an example here. Uh, this is an example of the older sprues where you had to glue this arm on uh, separately from the the hand and the weapon. Now, this is actually more like what they've done now, okay? And so, just to kind of make sure you can understand what I'm showing you as in the difference, let's see if I can find, where was the, uh, here's one, okay. All right, so this was the, the old, old set where you literally had to glue both arms on and then you put a weapon in one of the arms and you can see that weapon's not not commoded into the arm it's a separate piece right and it's just kind of sitting in that hand so you would do one two three pieces then in a lot of the new ones they went to one piece so it was just one arm segment and you glued that on now, and this is what I'm seeing mostly in almost all the airborne sprues, is you're getting two pieces. So you're getting one piece with the weapon already molded into the arm, but then you still have to glue on a separate arm and attach it to the weapon. And so, in looking at their sprue as I was, you know, as I was cutting up everything, I noticed there was no two-piece arms other than this guy holding binoculars. That's the only one you have that is actually one complete mold. Well, there's one up here. But the majority the majority of them are arms and then their other arm component. So I just thought that I would point that out because that means you're going to have to use the reference card on these again to see which arm goes with you know what shoulder and stuff whereas the other ones it really wasn't that important where it's just one piece like this you just glue it wherever you want to glue it now another thing i noticed is if you look at this guy's helmet and i was trying to put this figure together he has that little kit probably a bandage or whatever attached to his helmet well when you look at these sprues and i'll see if i can find a uh complete sprue because the one I have I've already started cutting on <sighs> so when you look at this sprue of the American Airborne none of the helmets have that pack already attached it's not there right so if you if you were expecting to be able to look through that helmet select the one with the pack and attach it you can't do that instead wait for it the packs are way down here right 
So you see these bandage packs down here, which means you're going to have to glue them onto the head. And they're, they're somewhat small. I mean, you could probably get three of them on a penny. So I'm going to show you real quick what I do, you know, and then I'm going to cut the video and finish putting together my miniatures. But I just wanted to show you how I deal with this. Now, rather than clip this off and then clip off a head and then try to maneuver or hold one down and glue it on there, this is what I do. So the first thing I do is I will clip off my head that I plan on using and you want to clean it up as much as possible because once you get that pack up there you know if you're trying to cut it or move it around you're probably going to knock it off with your finger and then you're going to have to you know try to get that little bitty pack back on when they're both separated all right and so then I put a little bit of glue on the helmet where I want it at then what I do is I bring the helmet up here to where the pack is. Okay, and I'm going to just attach that pack there. I'm now going to lay all this down. And you don't even have to get it to stick all the way. You just want to get some glue under the patch, get the patch kind of lined up, and then clip it. Okay, and now what happens is, as you clip it, and you take it off you can't see this but take my word for it it comes off on the helmet you know and you can move it around however you want now there's a little bit of sprue that attaches to the edge if you do it this way you know you can try to clean that up or what I just do is I just turn it around and face it in the opposite direction so I don't worry about it. But that's a quick way that you can do that uh, to get that pack on the helmet like they have it featured in the art without a bunch of fiddly winks. Otherwise, you're going to need tweezers. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that, guys that to give you that little technique. You know, if you can clip it a little bit cleaner, then you won't have to worry about that little, that little uh, spur that comes off on it. But anyway, I'll be back after I get these guys assembled. Okay, welcome back. So we have the assembled Airborne. And actually, I assembled these uh, overnight. So it's been about 12 hours since I last went away. Uh, I'm going to give you my impressions on this sprue and this kit when I get through showing you the miniatures. Or I don't know, I may give it to you while I'm showing you uh, the miniatures. But, uh, matter of fact, I'm just going to give it to you now. I, I really was not impressed with this kit. And there's several reasons for that, which I will go into as I look at each of the figures. But to highlight some of the main reasons, first of all, uh, I just didn't really like a lot of the poses. I think, you know, you might not be able to tell, but a lot of the miniatures that I, I put together kind of tended to be leaning forward and I'm not sure if that was intentional or if the miniatures were designed before they were put on stands because the problem would happen with a lot of them is when you put their feet down the miniature tended to to, to be leaning forward right so almost none of them are standing straight up and firing straight ahead right so if you look at all of these miniatures they all tend to be like they're pointing, they're shooting at people on the ground. It's almost from that reminds me of that scene in Band of Brothers when they rush over the field, right? And they're 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 uh you know they're making that big run and the lieutenant is leading them, you know, to, to wipe out the, the uh, Germans that they know are on the other side. These guys kind of have a pose like that's what they're trying to do. So that was my my first problem with them. I'll get into some of the other stuff as we go along. But first, let's take a look at the miniatures. Uh, now, one thing I will tell you I did with this kit, a lot of these parts are from other kits. Okay, and that was another problem I had was I didn't like some of the some of the kit as far as the way the parts went together. I, first of all, I, I was limited by a lot of the options. For example, the left arms on most of the guys, there's no 
There's like no left arm carrying equipment. There's no left arm carrying a map, binoculars, nothing. So if you had a figure with an open left arm, you know, you'd have to pose them in this kind of hand here or just a hand hanging down. This guy is actually supposed to be reaching for an ammo clip. So I was able to model that onto the figure. Uh, but, I mean, even the pose of this, this uh, Thompson machine gun, this arm, the way it's bent, you can only really pose it up or maybe straight down. But you can't do it straight ahead because the elbow, the elbow is, is too bent. So it won't, it won't look right pointing straight ahead. His elbow would be sticking out. Now, they do have another one where it is posed a little more straight ahead. But, I mean, a lot of the poses, for example, even on the sprue, and I tended not to use these. You know, you have the guys not doing anything. Out of all of these arms, and I think there was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know, one, two, three. Turn this over. Four. Five of the seven poses are guys with their weapons slung across their shoulders. I mean, who wants to put together a whole unit of airborne on the march? I mean, I, didn't, I don't think I used any of these because I thought it was ridiculous. And this was another problem I had with the left arm. So if I put seven guys together with their, their rifles slung across their shoulders in some fashion, I had nothing to put in their left arms. I mean, this is, this is like one of the left arms you get. Let me see if there's another one on here. Uh, you know, other than that, there, there was no, there was no left arm options. Like I wouldn't have minded if they had the left arm with the weapon slung across it, you know, and then maybe you could do the right arm with a map or with throwing a grenade or like, for example, you know, with the pistol, but they didn't, this is like a left arm here. You had to point and thing. You had the one here where the arm is curled over. And then you had these other arms which were designed, like this one is kind of hanging down with a with an open hand, so like if he's running. But that was it. So I really had a problem with that. Plus, I didn't want to assemble most of my kit with the guys marching with their weapons slung across their shoulders. And so if you're looking at, I mean, I think on the total kit, there was only 10, 10 like weapon stances. So I counted seven here, eight. I think the Thompson was there, which would be nine. I think there was a another uh 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 what was it uh boat action rifle or whatever up here the M1 carbine, and then you had a BAR, right? And I like the BAR pose, but other than that, you can see where I had to scavenge the same pieces off of the sprue, and the rest of these kind of never got. I don't think I used any of these. I mean, really, and I mean, just just to see guys running with their weapons slung across their shoulder, when you're dealing, this is supposed to be your elite airborne, I was kind of disappointed with that. So then I think I wound up with a disproportionate number of guys with Thompson machine guns. So that was, that was like two, the second or the third thing I had with the kit. The first one being kind of the poses with everybody leaning forward. The, the second one being the arm options, you know, where you have to, you know, seven out of 10 of them, you have these, the weapons slung across their shoulders. The third one being that there was no real left arm options whatsoever. So that brings us to the next miniature. Now, again, like I said, I used every, for, because these were my airborne, I used every bit of, uh, you know, I used every bit of the sprue that I could get on these guys. I mean, I put stuff on these guys. I've never put on my models before. And then I went, I started busting into other sprues, you know, just to make these guys, you know, look like the elite American unit that they were. So this guy has some Thompson cartridges. And I had everybody in this airborne squad carrying ammo. So whether you had a Thompson or not, everybody had some kind of ammo because that was the main thing you would need as an airborne if you're operating behind lines is everybody brought ammo. These are their bandages on their helmet, which I showed you guys earlier. And uh, again, he's got the M1 carbine. So we got another figure here. This is the Thompson and this is the best firing pose with the Thompson that you can get. And this, I love this pose. I love the weapon and arm, 
but you only get I think four of these. You get one foot like this on each sprue, and there's like four sprues. This guy has the knife at his ankle, which I attached. He has the uh, pistol, which I attached, because basically I've seen him as an officer. And again, he's got his uh, his Thompson ammo and his bandage. Now here's another officer. He's got his pistol. I slung this weapon across him. This did not come with the sprue. This is from another one of my American sprues. And I pretty much did this, you know, in case you run into any of the wargaming jerks that say, oh, well, he doesn't have a rifle there, so he's firing a pistol. So, no, he has his rifle, right? He's got his uh, binoculars. Again, but this is an American officer. I probably ran out of ammo or else he would have had some uh, Thompson ammo on him, too. So the next guy up is again, he's firing his M1. He's got his ammo. Uh, a lot of backpacks. This is actually the ammo for the carbine, right? That little clip that hangs at the bottom. So he's carrying that. And yeah, I didn't have a problem with these, these with this weapon thing here. Although there was a problem, to be honest with you, with this arm. Because it extended so far out, it was actually, this is about the only way you could pose it, and really one of the only figures you could pose it. I had to literally glue the weapon into that hand and hold it so it would stay there, because otherwise the arm just kind of hung in the air. So I thought that was kind of odd that, that those pieces were supposed to go together, but they didn't fit. Now here's another one of my own conversions. This guy has an arm from one of my German sprues, so I wanted it to make like he was holding a map. And again, you see how he's hunched over? That's 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 just this is you know, this is the pose, and there's four of these guys with their knees like this. So I put the map in his hand, he's got his Thompson, his Thompson ammo, his bandages. Uh I mean I like the way he came out. I'm just fortunate that, you know, I had a I have a lot of different sprues in order to make the guy look realistic. Because prior to putting that arm on there, I had I had this arm. So he was just kind of holding his Thompson with another arm, reaching for a bandage or something. I mean, I didn't want to have every guy reaching for ammo. So, you know, I, I basically went into every sprue that I had in order to really do these guys up. I really like this guy. So he's kind of got the little pigeon here ready to send it off. Kind of surveying, deciding when the best moment is to signal. He's got his bandage. He's got the little grenades. And that's probably the one thing I, I'm disappointed with with the second edition. And I, I, I have not heard anybody mention that they added grenades. And to be honest with you, I'm working on my own house rules to add grenades to the game. Which is probably just, I'm going to look at some other 28, mm, 28 millimeter of World War II games and see how they use grenades. I just don't know why the, the, the authors were so afraid to put grenades in the game. But I modeled some grenades on these guys. Next guy we got up. Again, he's firing his, uh, his M1 rifle. He's got his bandage. I gave him a pistol too. He's got some ammo for his Thompson mates. You know, pretty basic pose. Uh, I think this is again that arm I was talking about where you kind of got to press it in there. You know, because he was uh, bending, I was able to use that on him. Or because he was kneeling. The next guy we got up. This is not from the kit. This is an add-on. Because I don't think any of the kits had the weapons with the... Uh... Well, no, I think it might be. I think it might be... Is it that one? Yeah, so that's it. That's an M1 from uh, from the sprue, and again, it's kind of not firing. I guess he's moving forward with it. I couldn't get this hand in there, and that was another one of the problems with the left hand. But he's got his Thompson ammo, a basic kit, and his bandage. I was putting so much stuff on some of these, I started to run out of uh, other things to put on figures. I like this guy with his carbine. Again, he's got his uh, bandages. What did I put on this side? And again, some Thompson ammo. 
another another nice figure i mean the thing is though looking at these guys because of the new uniforms you can almost not even tell that they're airborne so the reason one of the things i wanted to do was really kit them out so that anybody looking would say those guys must be airborne look at all the you know look at the kit they, they're carrying so again we got the bandages <clears throat> this guy's with the thompson thompson ammo and again, he's a basic airborne trooper. <coughs> oh, the next guy is this guy here, who's kind of also kind of like a sergeant or an officer. He's got his bandoliers right there, the double bandoliers, some grenades, the Thompson, and all of this had to be added individually. Like you had to cut them off and attach them. Uh, it wasn't modeled on. His bandages, he's pointing, which is, I think, one of the left arms you get in the sprue. And again, you see where I had to do the Thompson sticking up. Because that's the only way you can do it with that arm. Here's another guy. You know, he could also be an officer, maybe a sergeant, or just, you know, just a corporal. But he's got some Thompson ammo, his bandoliers. I didn't really know whether these went on the back or the front. I assumed they went on the front, but I just put it on the back of this guy just because I, I didn't I wanted to kind of stylize his back area. Uh, this weapon is not from the sprue. This is an add-on from another my sprue. I gave him a carbine in case I needed another rifle in my squad. You know, I didn't want I didn't want to have to take away and say this guy has a pistol. So he does have his carbine. Uh, because that was another problem I had. I was having trouble getting, you know, 10 rifles or 8 rifles so that I could do a, a, a legal squad. I mean, unless I was just going to run 6-man airborne squads. This is the BAR gunner. He's got Thompson ammo. He's got his bandages. <laughs> I put his pigeon right here kind of still attached to his backpack. Because the pigeons come kind of wrapped in this... Uh, I don't know, it's like a little holster. So I put his in there like the holster was attached to his backpack. He's got his uh, grenades. Yeah, I figured this would be like a big tough guy. And the only person he gets along with is the pigeon. <laughs> and then this is his uh, loader. This again, this, this arm is from a German sprue. That's a German ammo box. But I thought it looked much better than any of the ones they offered. The weapon is from another sprue. So I've got the weapon slung across his shoulder. This ammo is from a German sprue. This is, uh, I think it's the MG42 ammo. But he's carrying that. His backpack, he's carrying some more Thompson ammo. So I like the way he came out. Now this is going to, this next model, I'm going to highlight another problem I had with the sprue. And that was with the M30 gunner arms. For some reason, the way the arm is made, and you might can see it better like this, it points off to the left of the model. So it was almost impossible to model this with the guy pointing straight forward. Instead, you see where he's kind of going at this angle, which I don't understand why they wouldn't have noticed that. I mean, because you can see clearly he's, he's like pointing off to the right. So... I mean, it kind of limited what I was able to do with it. Plus, there was almost no arm. There's no arm when you look at the guy that tells you how to match. There's no left arm to match with this. There's no arm that they say you match with the M30 machine gun. So ultimately, I, I, I found this arm, but it doesn't really line up. Plus, when I put this arm on here, the gun was sticking up in the air. So I had to model on this kind of tree. In order to get the impression that it was it was leaning up against a tree or it was you know it was it was uh it was being balanced on the edge of a tree or a log. So I mean I really had a problem with that. With that I just don't know why that M30 arm there's no first of all there's no left arm indicated for it, and secondly the arm just bends off to the left. But this is a Thompson from another kid I laid beside him. So again if one of these guys gets killed and I want to pick one up, I can say, you know, he has a Thompson. I can, you know, replace him with a model with a Thompson just so I don't lose any firepower. Because I guess under the new rule, you have to have 
a specific loader or whatever for the, the guy and you can't just assign somebody. So, you know, I'm making sure my guys have their weapon identified so when they're no longer attached. And then finally, we have our, what I call my pathfinders. And these were the miniatures in the box that had the Mohawks. And what I did was assemble them in a group of six that I'm going to try to field as a specific Pathfinder unit. Now, the weapons, I'm not sure if the weapon uh, allocation is legal yet, but uh, I kind of gave them, whoops, I kind of gave them a little bit of everything. And so I'm going to bring those over here next. Okay, so let's take a look at my Pathfinders. Now, these guys are obviously airborne, which you can tell by their, their Mohawks. And I can mix these in with the unit to, to give the whole unit, you know, that airborne look. But uh, tentatively, I'm really interested in seeing if I can run them as their own unit. And these guys, I kitted up to the max. So this guy has his knife. He has his uh, Thompson ammo. He's got the BAR. He's got a pistol. This guy, this soldier, he has his Thompson, he has his ammo, he has his knife, he has grenades, he has his backpack. Again, though, you see how he's leaning down. And that was really the only way I could get that, that weapon, you know, because of the way the arms work. So it almost looks like he's firing down into an enemy foxhole. Which one of them wouldn't be bad, but all of them, that's kind of annoying. This guy, I actually have firing a 30 caliber from his shoulder. And I know some of you might say, oh, well, you couldn't do that. Well, Rambo did it. No, I think Rambo had a 50 caliber. I think he fired it from the hip, but so what? This guy's tougher than Rambo. Anyway, so he's got the 30 cal that he's firing from the shoulder. The ammo belt is from a German sprue. He's got his, you know, his K-bar knife or whatever you call it. Uh, and one of these looks like an add-on. Yeah, this was like kind of a little add-on pouch thing, which I'm not sure what was in there. I could look on the sheet, but yeah, that was another, another piece I cut off and applied to him. This guy actually has a shotgun from another sprue, which I just thought was too cool to resist. So he's got his K-bar knife. He's got his, uh, his Thompson clips, and he's just got a friggin' shotgun. Just because. <laughs> I think that's from the Marine, U.S. Marine Sprue, if you're interested. This is a guy with his uh, carbine. He has a bazooka, which is from another one of my sprues. Or is that a, a bazooka or a panzer shrek? Mm, I think that's a bazooka. Yeah, but I put that in there uh, so that they'd have some anti-tank. Because I, if I if I run them by themselves, I want to have the option of saying that they have anti-tank, you know, that they have a bazooka with them. Uh, but yeah, he's got his knife and his carving. And then last but not least of my Pathfinders is my sniper. And that was kind of the last problem I had with this brew either. There's no sniper rifle in the sprue, meaning this, this weapon is from another sprue with the scope. But inside this sprue, you don't get a sniper rifle. So there's no option to build a, a sniper for your squad. And I'm assuming that's because they're going to sell them separately and make you buy them separately. Well, you know, you can buy yours separately. I, I've, I've bought enough with uh, Warlord Games that that's not going to fly with me. So I made my own sniper. Again, the problem with this guy was he was, when you put the arm on, you know, he's kind of leaning off to the left. So I had to, I had to lay him at an angle to get the impression, you know, that he was laying in that position to get the best shot. I gave him a Thompson as his weapon. No, actually, that's not a Thompson. That's a captured, uh, I think an STG-44, the assault, the, 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 German assault rifle. And I figured as a sniper, if he wanted one, he would get one. I mean, basically, you pop somebody and you go pick it up. 
So, yeah, he's got that. And then I gave him kind of a spotter with the binoculars. I mean, this guy's kind of not, not looking forward enough, but that's the high as I could get the arms. But, yeah, I kind of like the way he came out. So, overall, what is my impression on the uh, the Airborne included in the uh, Band of Brothers uh, set? Uh, you know, I think if I had to give it a grade, I'd give it a B-. minus. I just think for a second edition, there could have been a lot of things that they, uh, that they, they could have, you know, they could have foreseen and did better. I get the impression somebody came up with the sculpts and with the designs before actually, you know, and they manufactured them before they actually assembled them. So I don't, I don't get the impression that they did a prototype and then somebody put them together and then they said, okay, let's go with that. I just get the impression they designed these on the computer or however they designed them. They manufactured them. And then some of the stuff I'm finding out is the first time you put them together. So on the sprue, they look wonderful. You know, and you do get different poses. I have the metal airborne, uh, which I might show at the end of this, but which I like better than these, to be honest with you. But uh, I like these because they give me some different uh, they give me some different poses, and it's a different feel. So this is going to be my 82nd Airborne, which is appropriate. The better one is going to be the 101st Airborne, uh, which that one I actually don't have any of the Pathfinders for yet, so I might have to buy a metal kit for that. Uh, but other than that, that gets us through another phase of our Band of Brothers project. So the next thing I'm going to start working on is the painting and... Uh, you know, the painting and the uh, basing of my figures. Uh, after I get that out the way, we're going to kind of go over the rules. I'm going to do a video on the rule book, the second edition changes. After I do that, I'm probably going to do a video on my own house rules and some of the ideals I'm looking at. And then hopefully after that, we're going to run our first test, our first solo game. So thanks for watching. Take care. So these are some of my metal airborne, uh, which I painted myself. I love these guys. They even have the uh, 101 patch on them. Now the odd thing I just noticed when I went through the pack, this is the only figure in that pack with a Thompson machine gun. The rest of them are all using their M1s, their carbines. This guy has a bazooka, but I love that pose. So at least you do get, you know, dudes with the bazookas. Uh, and then this is, the majority of the figures are like this. And I think there's probably six of them in the box that come with them holding the, uh, the M1 like that. Uh, but I mean, these are beautiful miniatures. Uh, definitely, definitely if you... You know, if you if you're gonna do airborne, you got to get a box of these.